Good evening, everyone. This is Robert RJL518 welcoming you to another edition of Inside Pitch. The 1976 season is on the air. Today's date is July 31st, 1976, the final day of the month of July. We are at Metropolitan Stadium. It's the Oakland Athletics taking on the Minnesota Twins in a key matchup in the American League West. The Athletics come into this game at 59 and 42. And at this moment, the Athletics are in pretty good shape as they have a seven win lead on Kansas City. The Minnesota Twins at one point led this division. They've had a lot of tough losses lately and have now dropped to third in the division, a half game behind, believe it or not, the Kansas City Royals, who got off to a tough start early in the year. They're a half game behind them for second. So right now, Oakland, Kansas City, and Minnesota are in the top three. The California Angels are not done yet. Are not done yet. They are three wins behind Minnesota. The Rangers are six wins behind the Twins. But yet, they are, and they're still alive. So remember, top three teams in the divisions make the playoffs here in my, in my wonderful world of baseball. We got a good one tonight. The uh, Twins historically won this game 6-5. to five. There were 20 hits combined and four errors, so maybe a little ugly. But we'll see what tonight's game has to show for today as we get ready for some exciting baseball action. There have been some more rules changes now to the beta chart, so now I have some changes. And I got to keep up with them, mostly now to double plays and such. So we'll see if I make sure that we follow those rules. Bob's Tabletop Sports is first to join us here at Metro Stadium. Let's take a look at the start. Let's take a look at the game. Starting pitcher for the Minnesota Twins will be Dave Goltz. 14 wins, 14 losses, a 3-3-6 ERA. One of the Twins' better pitchers that year. So let's get started. The Athletics are trying to hold on to that lead in the American League West. Minnesota trying to stay close. Top of the first, leading off for the Oakland Athletics. Center fielder Bill North, 276 average, two homers, 31 RBIs. We are using brown, blue, light blue, and white for the Twins. They are the home team. Let's get started. 1-4 against a lefty switch. That's a blank. North will swing 1-3, and he flies out to center. Out number one. Next up for the A's, shortstop Burt Campanaris, 256 average, a homer, 52 RBIs that year. Tribe fan and BBBB join us here at Metropolitan Stadium. Goltz with the pitch, 5-5. Five, five. That's a blank. He is not tired. Campanaris 5-5. Five, five. Against the righty, he flies out the left. And that is the second out. Next batter up, first baseman Don Baylor. 247 average, 15 homers, 15 RBIs in 76. Bears Den 007 joins us here at Metro Stadium. Bolts will pitch. 1-1. One, one. That's a walk. Six. Yep, that will be a walk. Baylor will trot down to first. Metropolitan Stadium adds three to walks. And that's pretty high, actually, for walking. So we may see a lot of bases on balls today. Next up will be left fielder Joe Rudy. I always felt he was underappreciated uh, as a baseball player. 270 average, 13 homers, 94 RBIs. Not a bad player. Let's see anything happening on a on the bases, and that is an eight. Mm. Baylor does have a chance to steal here. Seven plus one is an eight. Baylor has a sixteen stolen base rating. Minus one is fifteen. The catcher for Minnesota is Butch Weiniger, and he has a zero. It would be a one to fifteen for Baylor to steal. Why not? Seventy five percent chance. Baylor is going to go, and he is out at second base as he is thrown out by Butch Weiniger. He needed a 15 to get there. That is a 16, and he is thrown out, and the inning is over. So nothing across for the A's. Rudy will have to lead off the bottom, the top of the second inning, as Baylor is thrown out by Weiniger. Nice throw by him. We go to the bottom of the first. 
Starting pitcher for the Oakland Athletics, Paul Mitchell. Nine wins, seven losses, a 4-2-5 ERA. He gets the call tonight for the Swingin' A's. Leading off for the Minnesota Twins will be their designated hitter, Steve Braun. 288 average, three homers, 61 RBIs. Usually plays in the outfield, but Braun is tonight's DH for the Twins. Mitchell will pitch. 5-4, that's a range play. Braun will swing. 1-6, pop up to first base. That's in shallow, left, shallow right field. First baseman is Don Baylor. His range is a three. That's going to, he'll make the catch pretty much and easily there with a one, and that is out number one as Braun pops out to first. Next batter, the shortstop, Roy Smalley, 259 average, three homers, 44 RBIs, future Yankee. Scored 12 in the first inning today on five hits, seven walks. <laughs> Ended 15-3 score. Yeah, you get those sometimes. Mitchell. 2-6, strikeout, 19, no, he avoids that. Smalley swings, 6-3, and he flies out to center for the second out. Here is first baseman Rod Carew, best Jewish hitter in baseball history. 331 average, 9 homers, 90 RBIs, and as a Jew, I can definitely say that. Rod Carew. Maybe the, maybe the best contact hitter in baseball history. Now, I don't want to take anything away from players like Ted Williams, you know, or Tony Gwynn or anything like that. But Rod Carew, maybe the best contact hitter. I don't know. It's argue. It's a debate. It's a debate. It's a debate, but he may have been very possible. Maybe the best contact hitter in modern history, if you want, if you don't want to use Ted Williams from the 40s and the 50s. Mitchell will pitch, 4-1, that's an error on a grounder. Carew, 5-1, that's a ball hit to center field. That is an 18 against a righty. That's going to be too high, and that's just going to be a fly out to center. And that is a 1-2-3 inning for the Twins. No error on a grounder, obviously, because the ball didn't touch the ground. So no score after one. Top of the second coming up. And once again, here's Joe Rudy. He was at the plate when Baylor was thrown out. Goltz will get him a chance again now. Goltz with the pitch. 3-3. Three, three. That's a strikeout. 14. No. Rudy. 2-5. That's a pop out to third. One quick out. And now we'll have third baseman Sal Bando, 240 average, 27 homers, 84 RBIs. Sal Bando, good, actually not a bad hitter. I.D. Jester joins us here at Metropolitan Stadium, one of the masters of disaster. And Brian Patterson as well joins us here at Metropolitan Stadium. Colts will pitch 4-6. That is a walk. That six will walk Bando. And Bando will trot to first. Second walk already issued by Goltz. Next batter for the Athletics is the catcher, Gene Tennis. He's a catcher this for this game. 249 average, 22 homers, 66 RBIs. Double play depth. Colt, see if anything happening on the bases. That 13 says no. Goltz will pitch. 2-1, that's at the park. Metropolitan Stadium, 3-6. That's a star one. It's going to be a ground ball to first. Now, the new rule is grounders to, on, a, on a grounder to first base. The double play plus one does no longer come into effect. So on the new chart, dig P rating, you'll see first base minus one still to the runner range, but no longer a plus one to the double play. So now that makes it a little bit tougher now to make the double play from first to second, back to first, which, believe it or not, I actually agree with it. So it is a ground ball to first. So let's see what happens anyway. So three, zero. The second, the pivot man for Minnesota is Smalley, plus one is a four. Still got a good chance, though. A one to four, it's a double play. No, Bando will be thrown out at second. He will, and Tennis will beat the relay back to first, and that's out number two. 
So that is a new rule, which, at, which remember, this is still beta. These are still beta charts. He's still working on them. But I actually agree with that. A lot of people were wondering why it was so easy to get those 3-6-3 three, three double plays. He's now toned that down a bit on the first baseman, and that actually makes good sense. So that goes as a fielder's choice. And now taking over for, for the now batting is right fielder Claudel Washington. 257 average, five homers, 53 RBIs. Two outs now. Let's see if anything happening on the bases. That's a four and no. Goats, 4-3. Against the left, he has to walk plus that 15 will walk Washington. He has a seven and that 10, be, extra 10, it becomes a 17. Washington would have walked anyway on, on none of matter, so he will go to first. But that is already the third walk issued by Goltz. He had 87 of them in 76. And now the A's will bring up their designated hitter, Billy Williams, Hall of Famer, 211 average, 11 homers, 41 RBIs. He is today's swing and A's DH. Two outs. Anything happening on the bases? Nope. Goltz. 4-6. That's a walk. That 18 barely misses. Oh, the 18 beats the 17. Williams will swing. 3-2. And that's just going to be a star two and a ground out to second. And the inning will end there. Nothing for Oakland. Two walks. But that's it. And they strand a couple. And we go to the bottom of the second. He is really doing a job. Chris is really doing a job on getting the new rules or the updated rules set for this game. I think it makes it a little bit more, a lot more realistic. A couple of things I still have an issue with, but it's okay. It's his game, and I'm happy to play it. Bottom of the second, leading off for the Twins, catcher Butch Weiniger. 260 average, 10 homers, 69 RBIs that year. Mitchell, 1-6. That's blank. Weiniger, 3-3, three, three, star four, ground out to short. One man down. Here is Lyman Bostock. He is in center field today. 323 average, four homers, 60 RBIs. That's a pretty good year for, for Bostock. Mitchell, 4-1. That's an error on a grounder. Bostock. 1-5. That's going to, against a right-handed pitcher, that's going to be a double in the right field. Bostock smacks a double. And the question is, is it an error on a grounder? The ball is hit to Washington. His error rating is a 6. And that, oh boy, that is right between 11 and 4. Oh, I, that's a leaner. I know it is. I'm going to have to re-roll that. I am not sure. It is a nine. There's not going to be an error, so Bostock is going to go ahead and hold at second base. I was right on it. I had to re-roll it. If in doubt, re-roll. So Bostock gets a double to right. He'll go to second. That will bring up the third baseman, Mike Cubbage. 257 average, three homers, 49 RBIs. You get sad when you think of Bostock. Yes, I know. Runner on second. The infield will stay back. Nothing happening on the bases. Mitchell will pitch. 5-4. That's a range play. Cubbage. 3-3. Three, three. That's a star five. It's a fly ball to left field going to Joe Rudy. His range is a three. And he'll make the catch. Out number two. Bostock. His base running rating is a three. The ball is at the left. Minus three on, the, on a fly out is a zero. Rudy has a minus one arm, so Bostock has not even attempted to go to third. He'll stay where he's at for the second out. Two men down. On a fly out to left, that brings up the left fielder, Larry Heisel, 272 average, 14 homers, 96 RBIs. Good year for Larry Heisel and a very good and a pretty good outfielder with some great ranges out there. Check to see if anything happening on the bases. The seven says no. Mitchell will pitch. Three, two. That's a blank. Heisel swings. Four, six. Base hit to left field. That's a single. Will that score Bostock? Base running rating three. With two outs is a four. Single to left to get to home. Plus one is a five. Rudy minus one arm is a four. 
A one to four, Bostock will score. A five, he holds. Six, someone could be out. That is a two. Bostock will come in to score, and the Twins take the lead. On the two, Heisel stays at first, and it's one nothing Twins. Stadium cheers. Yay! RBI signal single by Larry Bostock will by Larry Heisel brings in Bostock one nothing Twins. Next batter for the Twins, right fielder Dan Ford, two sixty seven average, twenty homers, eighty six RBIs. Checking to see if anything on the bases. That is a twelve. Nothing happening. Mitchell two three. That is a that is a strikeout chance. 16. That will get Ford. Ford has an 18, which means he strikes out a lot. And that will get him. And the inning is over. First strikeout for Mitchell. He only had 67 of them. One run for the Twins on two hits. After two, one nothing in favor of Minnesota. Minnesota, a half game behind Kansas City for second place. The Athletics in pretty good command of first place in the American League West. The Twins need to win games to stay relevant. California and Texas are not out of it yet. Top of the third, leading off for the Athletics. Second baseman, Scrap Iron Phil Garner. 261 average, 8 homers, 74 RBIs. Of course, he was on the Astros 1985 team that won my World Series. Goats with the pitch. 3-2, that's a wild pitch. We'll do it again. Ball one. 6-6, six, six. that's a double question mark. Garner's a righty. A 1-4 would be a single up the middle. The 14 is too high. Garner, 4-6, and against a right-hander, he flies out the left. One quick out, and here is Bill North. North is 0-1. for 1. Bolts. 1-3 at the park. Metropolitan Stadium, 3-6, star one. That's a ground out to first. Two down. And now Burt Campanaris. Campanaris 0 for 1. Bolts ready to pitch. 6-1, that's blank. Campanaris, 1-2, star six. He grounds out to third. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for Bolts. Nice job. To keep Oakland from getting any runs back. We go to the bottom of the third. For the Twins, leading off is their second baseman, Bob Randall. 267 average, a homer, 34 RBIs. He gets the call tonight for the Twins. Mitchell, 5-2. Range play at the park. Metropolitan Stadium, 1-6, star 5. That's a fly ball to left field. That is going to Joe Rudy. His range again is a 3. He won't get it. Single or double. That's going to be a double for Bob Randall. He hits it over Rudy's head. And Randall will hot down to second base. Lead off hit. Lead off double for Randall. Dave Gardner joins. Uncle Dave Gardner joins us here at Metropolitan Stadium. Next batter is Steve Braun. Braun is 0 for 1. Randall a leadoff double hit over Rudy's head. See if anything happening on the bases. The 12 says a no. Mitchell, 3-1. Range play again. Braun, 2-2. Two, two. That's a base hit to center field, but it is a range play first. That's it to Bill North. His range is a 2. No, he's not getting it. That's going to be a single to center. Randall's base running rating is a two, gets plus two to come to home. That's a four. North plus one is a five. Randall, a one to five, he scores. He does. Bob Randall will score from second on an RBI single by Steve Braun. It's two-nothing twins. Steve Braun gets an RBI single. They're going to go talk to Paul Mitchell on the mound, see if he's all right. Next batter for the Twins is Roy Smalley. Smalley is 0 for 1. Braun does have a slight ability to steal. A 3 or lower, he could do it. A 5, no, and Smalley strikes out too much. 
So no hit and run. Mitchell will go ahead and pitch. 1-4. That's a walk. That 12 will walk Smalley. And right now the Twins look like they're going to put some more runs on the board. A walk to Smalley, and that is the first, that's the first walk issued by Paul Mitchell. Only had 30 of them in 76. The infield, of course, is a double play depth. And here comes the very dangerous Rod Carew. Carew is 0 for 1. Let's see, anything happening on the bases? The 18 says no. Carew is not going to bunt. He's going to swing away. Why would you bunt with Rod Carew when you have a 331 average? Mitchell will go ahead and pitch. 1-2, although he was a great bunter. Strikeout, 19. No. Carew gets the swing. 2-2. Two, two. That's a ball hit to left field. That is a 7 against a righty. Carew is going to smack a double off of Paul Mitchell. Double for Carew. That will score Braun. He comes in to score. Smalley's base running rating is a three. And that is a double to left. So to left field. So double to left field minus one, two. Left fielder Rudy minus one is a one. So the only way Smalley can score is on a one. No, it could be an out. That's a six. And Joe Rudy's arm is a minus one. So now we go to the new chart. So a one to four, there's going to be an out. A five or six, Smalley holds. That is a three. So we have an out. Now we got to find out who the out is. And let's see. So a one or six, a one, a one, Smalley's a one, it's Carew. Two to five, it's Smalley. Six, we got a rundown. That is a four. It is Smalley. He is gunned down at the plate by Joe Rudy. Rod Carew's base, however, Rod's base, Rod Carew's base running rating is a four. That is a four, and that will allow Carew to go to third. So Carew goes to third, and he is, and Braun is out of there. But a run does score. So Braun scores. Smalley doesn't. It's three to nothing. Twins. Stadium cheers. EA. An RBI double by Rod Carew actually becomes a triple with him going to third, but it's laced as a double. And so the Twins right now are in good shape. Keith White joins us here at Metropolitan Stadium. And here's Butch Weiniger. So only one run scores as a great throw by Joe Rudy to get Smalley at the plate. And that is one out. So now Weiniger is the batter. Weiniger is 0 for 1. See if anything happening on the bases. The infield is, let's see, 14. The infield is going to play in. Mitchell will pitch to Weiniger, and that's a 4-5. That's a double question mark. Weiniger hitting from the left side. A 1-4 to four is a single up the middle. That's a 2. Weiniger smacks it right back through the box past Mitchell for a base hit. Weiniger goes to first. Carew comes in to score, and it looks like the Twins are going to try to put a hurt on the A's as they lead 4 to nothing now. RBI single by Weiniger. And the A's bullpen is already beginning to get warmed up here. Don't know how much longer Mitchell will be able to stay out. Infield back to double play depth. There's still one out here in the bottom of the third. Here's Lyman Bostock. Bostock is one for one. He doubled his first time up. Anything happening on the bases? No. Mitchell will pitch to Bostock, and that's a 1-3 against the lefty. That's a walk, 17. That's too high. Bostock will swing. 3-1. Base hit left field for Bostock. That's a single to left. Weiniger's base running rating is a 1. Single to left, minus 2. Rudy, minus 1-3. No way for Weiniger to get to third. He will be happy, as since he has slow and molasses to stop at second. Another base hit. 
The only out was a throwout, so really Paul Mitchell has not gotten really anybody out except for the throwout at the plate by Rudy. And now here's Mike Cubbage. Cubbage 0 for 1. The infield will stay at double play depth. Looking for two outs, trying to get out of this inning. Twins already with a 4 nothing lead. See if anything happening on the bases. That 13 is a negative. Mitchell will pitch. 1-4. That's a walk. That 4 is good. And the bases are loaded. And it looks like we're heading for another blowout. Bases loaded, and it's up to Larry Heisel. And the Twins are going to go talk to Mitchell here for a moment and wonder if he's going to stay in there. A's bullpen ready to go. I really would like to see if he can get out of this, but let me take a look at it. Let me look at Mitchell's pull ratings. Let me see here. One, two, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 12. He's already a couple over his pull rating. I usually use that as a gauge. I don't use that hard and fast. Base is loaded, and you're already down 4 nothing. and a, a good hit here really takes Oakland out of this game early. Ugh. Let's see. You got right, right, right. Let me check the Oakland bullpen. Since it's before the since it's before the uh, top of the since it's before the fifth inning, I can bring in a starter to pitch if necessary. That is a rule I do use. But he, of course, he has to have a relief ability. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with. Oh boy, let me see here. What am I gonna do here? I'm going to let Mitchell pitch, see if he can get out of this. So Paul Mitchell will pitch to Heisel. Bases are loaded. One out here, bottom of the third. Heisel's one for one. Nothing happening on the bases. And no, you're not trying to, you don't bunt here. So Mitchell's going to pitch. That's a five, six. That's a blank. Heisel swings. Three, six. And that's going to be a base hit past third base. Heisel has himself a single pass third. Weiniger comes in to score. Bostock's base running rating is a three, single five. He will not be able to score. He will hold at third. And the runners will go station to station here, which will bring in a run. As Heisel has a single. And it is now five to nothing twins. And that is got to be it for Mitchell. So Dan Ford coming up to bat now, but Mitchell is done. Oakland will go to the bullpen. And coming on to pitch for the Oak for the Athletics will be Mike Norris. He can pitch to 11 batters in relief, and it makes sense to bring him out. Mike Norris coming off for Oakland. Four wins, five losses, a 4-7-8 ERA. He'll pitch to Dan Ford. Twins already leading 5-0. Twins did win this game historically. So right now, inside pitch seems to agree with it. So let's see what happens, right? at least for this game. So we still have a strat roll. And that is a three, nothing happening. Norris will pitch to Ford. Still one out, bottom of the third. Norris, 1-1. One, one. That's at the park. Metropolitan Stadium, 6-3. That is grounded at the plate. That is a ground ball at the plate. And they're and that's a grounder at the plate. And tennis is just going to hold on to that and tag out and make the force there at the plate. And now he's going to try to go to first with a double play. Really, you're trying for a double play here. So 2-1. 2-1, no pivot, so the only way they get a double play is on a 1. I'm not even going to try it. I'm just going to tag out Bostock and let the runners go station to station and make it two outs. That's something I was actually talking to Chris about. Can a, can a catcher just hold on to it on bases loaded and just make the play? So Ford grounds out to the catcher. It is a fielder's choice. And now the batter is Bob Randall. Because Cubbage is a dead duck. Because Cubbage is a dead duck. So two outs. Now base is loaded. 
And here's Randall. Randall doubled his first time up. And actually, this is the, the uh, Twins have batted around here. So Randall's up for the second time in this inning. See if anything happening on the bases. That is a 9-0. No. Norris, 5-5. Five, five. Against a righty, that is a straight home run check. Randall against a righty needs a 2 for a grand slam. He gets a 4. He just missed it by 2. So no grand slam for Randall, but he does get the swing. 5-5. Five, five. That's a star 5, and he's going to chop it to 3rd to end the inning. Wow. So four runs for Minnesota on one, two, three, four, five, six hits on a couple of walks. Maybe should have been a lot more, but the Twins will be happy with a 5 nothing lead here after three. That was a question I asked Chris. He really didn't get back to me yet on that. I'm still waiting for it. But I decided to make the call that the catcher would just tag the ba just tag the bat the base. Because if you go for a double play and you roll a six, the runners the runners advance. So in this case, don't even go for the double play. Just take the force out and be happy with it. Is the G two play address the new rules or is holding for the force a homebrew? At the moment, baseball uh, Dave, I made that a homebrew. the The rule on the G two okay, is, and first of all, the infield was in double play depth. It was not in. So there really was no chance for a double play anyway with that. Very difficult to do so. So I just said, and I, and I asked him that question, Dave. I've asked him that question. He's not gotten back to me on that yet, okay, for a G, on a G2 if the base is loaded. So I just said, you know what, the catcher's going to tag the base, hold on to it, and just get the out. So that's my that was my decision. So that may change. We'll see what he gets back to me. Chris has again made some more chart rules, and this is brand new. You really need to get this. He's made some changes now to double plays when the ball is hit to the first baseman if the if the infield is a double play depth. Meanwhile, let's go to the top of the fort. Leading off for Oakland will be Don Baylor. Five nothing twins. Baylor uh walked his first time up. Bolts ready to pitch. 2-2, two, two, strikeout, 10, no. Baylor will swing. 4-1, he pops out to short. That was my call, Dave. The new chart is on the forum, yes. It's under the IP field section. IP field thread. Here's Joe Rudy. Rudy is 0 for 1. Bolts with the pitch. 1-6, strikeout, 12, nope. Rudy, see what he can do. 5-2, he flies out to right. And that is out number two. And now here's Sal Bando. Bando walked his first time up. 1-1, one, one, that's a walk, 11, yes. Bando will trot down to first. Another walk issued by Goltz. And that is the fourth walk given up by him. Remember, Metropolitan Stadium adds three to walks. It was very easy. It looks like it was a lot easier to draw bases on balls. Here's Gene Tennis. Tennis is 0 for 1. Still two outs. I'm still going to roll a strat. 13, nothing happening. Goltz ready to deal. Earthquake here. Goltz will pitch. 3-2, wild pitch. That's a three. That will allow Bando to go to second. So Goltz uncorks, uncorks a wild one. And Bando goes to second on the wild pitch. Now we'll re-roll the strat. An eight says nothing happening. Goltz will pitch. 2-2, two, two, strikeout. 15, no. Tennis. 4-1, star three. That's a grounder to third. And the throw will go to first. Side retired. Nothing for Oakland. They give up a walk, but that's it. Still 5 nothing in favor of the Twin Cities. But yes, the new chart is on the forum. You got to look under IP field thread. He put the new chart there. 
Bottom of the fourth, Mike Norris is going to pitch, is going to stay out there. He might as well. Top of the order for the Twins, there's Steve Braun. Braun is one for two, singled his last time up. Norris, 2-6, error on a throw. Braun, 3-5, that's a ground ball to first base, and that is hit, that is hit to Baylor. His error rating is a nine, that's a nine, he's going to make an error. He's going to make a throwing error, Mike Norris's range is a five, the throw would go to the pitcher covering the bag. A one to five, Norris prevents this from getting past him. He does. So Braun is safe at first, though, but that is an E3 on Baylor. And the Athletics are not having a good day. That's the first error on Oakland. They had three errors in this game, historically. Infield will go to double play depth, and the batter will be Roy Smalley. Smalley walked his last time up. He's 0 for 1. I'm still rolling the strap. Let's see if anything happening. Five. No. Norris will go ahead and pitch. 6-3. Range play at the park. Metropolitan Stadium, 2-5. Pop up behind the plate, and that is tennis. His range is a 2. He won't get it, and that's going to be a foul ball. We'll do it again. Strike one. Pop up behind the plate on a range play is a foul ball if it's not caught. Norris will do it again. 3-3 three, three. against the lefty switch. That's a walk plus 10, and that 4 will walk Smalley. So right now, the Athletics pitching staff is just having a bad day. That is another walk. And now here comes Rod Carew. Carew hit a, RB, hit a, two R, and a one RBI double his last time up. He's one for two. Our baseball fans consider to be Athletic. Dave, stop it. Ah. Oh, God. Chat, if Dave is going to be punny, you know what you need to do to him, right? Runners at first and second. <laughs> Here's Carew. Still rolling a strat. Nobody out here in the bottom of the four. Ten says nothing happening. Norris will pitch. Six, four. Again, a range play. Carew will swing, 3-4. That's a base hit to left field. That is a range play for Joe Rudy. His range is a three. He'll make that catch. He'll take away a single, and that's out number one. Braun's base running rating is a three. There's no chance for him to get the third on that, on that fly out. So that's out number one. Fly out the left. Cheer the puns. Throw tomatoes or none of the above. <laughs> Throw tomatoes. Here's the catcher, Butch Weiniger. Weiniger won for two today. Has an RBI single. Runners at first and second now. Infield is still at double play depth. That is a 17. Nothing happening on the strat. Norris will pitch. 3-6. Strikeout. 12. No. Too high. Weiniger. 2-4. Fly out to center. That is out number two. Bronze base running ratings of three. Minus two fly out to center. North is a plus one. So a one to two for Braun to try for third. Uh, you're up five, nothing. You know what? No. He'll just stay at second base, two outs. I am also waiting for him, by the way, Dave, to uh, respond to me on gamer's choices for, you know, when the for something like I just did, where the where the runner does not have to go for the score is a little bit too high, you know, or a gamer's choice if he even though it's six run lead and you still want to try to get the run in, the gamer can still make that decision. I'm still waiting for him to come back to me on that. Then again, like I say, you can play the game the way you want. That's what's so fun about it. You can make some changes to your own don't your own tastes. Five nothing, two outs now. The infield be back. Here's Lyman Bostock. Bostock having a good game. He's two for two, a single and a double. Norris, that's a three. Nothing happening there. Braun not doing anything. Norris will pitch. Four, one, hit by pitch. Three, no. Bostock will swing. Comes away with a four, six, and he flies out the right, and the inning is over. 
So no runs, a walk, and there was an error, and that keeps the Twins off the board. After four, still 5 nothing in favor of Minnesota. I don't think there's anything supporting this group of athletics. The Twins are out and free. <laughs> yeah, right? Fifth inning coming up. Leading off for the A's, Cornell Washington, the swinging A's. Although the athletics are swinging, but they're not hitting. Here's the pitch from Goltz. Washington, by the way, is oh, walked his last time up. Goltz, 2-1. That's at the park. Metropolitan Stadium will say Sue Dice. 6-4. That's a ground ball to third. That'll get thrown to first. Out number one. And the next batter will be Billy Williams. Williams is 0 for 1. Goltz will pitch. 2-2. Two, two, strikeout. 15 too high. Williams will swing. 6-1. That's a ball hit to center field. That is a 16 against a right-hander. That is way too high. And that's just going to be a fly out to center. Out number 2. Way too high. Billy Williams, of course, Hall of Famer, but he was way, way past his mark. This was his last year. Next batter will be Phil Garner. Garner is 0 for 1. Colts ready to pitch. And that's 6-2. Error on a throw. Garner, 2-6. And that's going to be... That's going to be a high fly ball deep to left field, and that's going to drop for a triple for Phil Garner. There won't be a throwing error, but that is going to be a triple for Garner. Phil Garner smacks a triple in the left, and he will stop at third, and that is the first hit off of Dave Goltz. He goes four and two-thirds innings before giving up a hit. He had a lot of walks. He's given up He's given up four walks today, but that's his first hit. So two outs, runner on third. And now here's Bill North. Can Oakland maybe get a run in here? North is 0 for 2. MP Fox joins us here at Metropolitan Stadium. And he says he's purchased yet another baseball game. Thank you. I know you will enjoy it, MP Fox. Remember, take your time. And also remember, the rules you'll be receiving are being are being updated. So make sure you download these charts. Oh, don't tell your wife. Well, if she's listening, I do apologize for that. Runner on third. North is at the plate. Infield is back. Anything happening on the bases? That is a one. Uh, Garner is not going to try to steal home, although that actually did come up, but no. Goltz is going to pitch. That's a 3-1. Range play at the park. Metropolitan Stadium, 3-1. That's a base hit to center field. That is hit. That is hit to Bostock. It is a range play first. His range is a 3. Bostock makes the catch and takes a sink. Takes a hit and a bit and a run off the board. A single plus eight on a range play. Bostock needs a three. He got it. That would have been a single. And instead, it's a fly out to center. And the inning is over. What a play by Lyman Bostock in center. No runs. A hit for Oakland. We, we are halfway through the game, still 5-0 in favor of the Twins. Bottom of the fifth. And BBBB is playing the red schedule. Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> oh. That's probably a lot of fun. If you're playing the 1976 red schedule, uh, BB, uh, what do you do? Just plug in. You're probably just plug and play. That's it. Just plug and play. Just roll. The Reds will take care of themselves. Bottom of the fifth. And leading off of the 
Twins is Mike Cubbage. Mike Norris still has a few more batters he can face, so he's going to stay out there. Cubbage is 0 for 1. He walked his last time up. Norris, 5-3. That's a blank. Cubbage, 6-5. And that's going to be a base hit to left. Single for Cubbage. Man, the Twins are hidden today. Cubbage will go to first on a single. And now Larry Heisel is up. Heisel's two for two. He has two singles. Just for the burden, Randy Jones. I would like to remind you, uh, Dave, I did get a game with Randy Jones coming up, I think, in about a week. So be on the lookout. The Padres will be playing someone. I did get Randy Jones on the board. He was one of the top pitchers I've not put on the board yet. He will be, but I will not tell him who they're playing. Cubbage on, Cubbage on it first. Heisel's the batter. One, two for two. And am I still rolling a strat? Yeah. And that is a three. Nothing happening. Norris will pitch. One, three. Strikeout. 17. Too high. Heisel will swing. Three, one. Against the righty. That's a grounder to second base. Let's see if they turn. Let's see if they turn the double play. Two, one, two. Shortstop. Shortstop is Cart is Campaneris minus one. All right. So the only way to turn a double play is on a one. Nope. Cubbage will be thrown out at second, and the throw will get will not beat Heisel. He'll get the first, and that's out number one. On the fielder's choice. So one out now. And here's Dan Ford. Ford is 0 for 2. Infield still a double play depth. Norris will still pitch. Anything on the strat? Nope. Norris, 5-4 against the righty. Strikeout, 6. That will get Ford. Struck him out. That's a big K for Norris. That's two outs. And now Bob Randall. Randall is 1 for 2. Has a double in this game. Heisel, let's see if anything happening on the bases. The nine says a negative. Norris will go ahead and pitch. Two, five. Strikeout, six. Too high, barely misses it. But Randall against righties is a five, and he will not strike out that way. Randall, six, two, but that's a star six and a fly out the left, and that will end the inning. So no runs a hit for the Twins. It remains 5 nothing. as so far, once again, the bullpen, the bullpen of the team does better than the starter, kind of like last night's game. 5 nothing Twins after 5. Sixth inning is next. Leading off for the Athletics is Burt Campanaris. Campanaris is 0 for 2. Goltz ready to deal. 2 4. That's a blank. Campanaris, 2 2. Fly out to center. Goltz pitching a gem tonight so far. Only a one hitter doing a good job. Here's Baylor. Baylor is 0 for 1. He walked and got thrown out at second base in the first inning. Goltz ready to deal. 2-1. That's at the park. Metropolitan Stadium 3-6. Star one. Ground out the third. Ground out the first. Sometimes the G3 confuses me a little bit, but I know it's a grounder to first. Two men down, and here is Joe Rudy. Rudy is 0 for 2. Goltz will pitch. 6-3. That's a blank. Rudy gets the swing, 4-3. That's a line drive right to shortstop, right into Smalley's glove. Side retired. One, two, three, go the A's. The swinging A's are swinging, but they're missing. We go to the bottom of the six. Still 5 nothing. favor of the Twins. 
ABC's Monday Night Baseball using Strat 7 Oakland at Chicago. Ooh, another another Athletics game. Baseball Demo says, after the 10-minute ticker, ABC's Monday Night Baseball 1982. Tonight, it will be the Oakland Athletics taking on the Chicago White Sox. Big game there at Baseball Demos. Make sure you check them out after my game here tonight. We go to the top of, we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. And Steve Braun is due to bat. That's it for Mike Norris. He's going to come out. The Athletics are going to go to the bullpen. They got left switch left. So I think the, the A's will go to a lefty. And coming on to pitch for Oakland is going to be Paul Lindblad. He'll be the third, the third A's pitcher. Paul Lindblad, six wins, five losses, five saves, a 3.06 ERA. He'll get the call now, and he'll pitch to Steve Braun here to start the bottom of the sixth. Lindblad, 4-5, range play at the park. Metropolitan Stadium, 3-5. That's a ground ball to first. That's it to Baylor. Baylor's range is a three. Nope, is that going to be a single or a double? That's going to be a single. Braun will get the first. Base hit for Braun. That's his second hit of the game as Baylor couldn't make the play. And now here's Roy Smalley. Smalley 0 for 1, but he's walked twice. Double play depth. Strat roll is canceled. Lindblad, Lindblad will pitch. 6-4. Strikeout. 16. Got him. No, he did not get him. I'm sorry. Against a lefty. No. Too high. Smalley will pitch. Will swing. 5-3. That's a grounder to second base. Let's see if they turn the double play. 2-1-2. Two, two. Shortstop for Oakland is, is Campanaris minus 1. So only on a 1, they turn the double play. No, Braun will be out at second. Smalley will take first. One out. Another fielder's choice. And the next batter will be Rod Carew. Rod Carew. Wow, Braun over 400 at bat. I hate it when you bring that up, Dave. But I'll, but I'll tell you right now. The reason why he has no splits is because most of these were at bats against right against uh against um one side. It, his rule was that he made that if they had fifty or less at bats against one side of the plate, he made it a cookie cutter. Dave, I don't know what to say about that. You know, you know that. Me, I really don't care. I play it the way the card is written. So Smalley at first, and the ratings are still pretty close to me. I don't argue. I don't argue ratings. I just, I just don't argue ratings. It has to do with his game men. It goes with his game engine, and like I said, you know, Smalley on at first. Here's Carew. Carew is one for three. The infield is double play depth. No strat. Lindblad six five against the lefty. That's a blank. Carew will swing. 4-4, four, four. that's a ground ball to second base. Again, a double play chance. And again, 2-1-2 two, two, and minus one shortstop. Campanera, so again, only on a one, Oakland turns a double play. They don't get it. But Smalley, however, on a two, he will beat the throw to second. So in this case, the throw is only going to go to first to get Carew, and that's a second out. Since Smalley's base running rating is a two, matches the two because of the because of the double play, because of the double play depth, Smalley will make it to second. So grounder to second, grounder to second base, and the next batter will be Butch Weiniger. Weiniger is one for three. He has a single. Infield is back. Lindblad will pitch, and that's a four three. And that's an error on a grounder. Weiniger will swing. 1-5. That's a ground ball to second base. Again, the ball is hit. The ball is hit to Phil Garner. Garner's error rating is a 7. That's a 17. He won't make an error. And he'll throw to first to get the outside retired. So all three hits were hit to Phil Garner. And he actually makes all the plays pretty much. No runs and a hit, though. After six, still 5 nothing in favor of the Twins.
top of inning number seven. Let's see who Oakland has. Here is Sal Bando. Bando's walked twice. He's 0 for 0. Gold still's pretty strong. He's going good. Fans here at Metro Stadium hoping for some more fun. Bolts with the pitch. 2-1. That's at the park. Metropolitan Stadium, 4-2. That is a blank. We got a rare play with bases empty. Let's see what we get. 65. Inside pitch possibly hits batter. Resolved like a hit by pitch. Either way, the batter charges the mound, causing a bench-clearing brawl. One player from each team thrown out, rolling the 1D20 for each team, with 1-9 to nine being the players at that position in the game, and 10-20 to 20 being a bench player ranked by at-bats from 1-11, to 11, pitcher and batter also thrown out. Oh, the dreaded 65, and we had this in that crazy game, all right, between on the crazy game between the Cardinals and the Expos in the division series. So let's start from the beginning, shall we? So, yep, so here we go. So let's start from the beginning. So first off, inside pitch possibly hits batter. Resolved like a hit by pitch. Well, Sal Bando's hit by pitch rating is four minus, is five, minus one is a four. And I'm gonna roll the D20. And that is a four. Bando did get hit. He does get hit. That is a hit batter. Resolved like a hit by pitch. Either way, the batter charges the mound, causing a bench-clearing brawl. So one player from each team throw out, rolling a 1D20 for each team, with 1-9 to nine being the players at that position in the game, and 10-20 to 20 being a bench player, ranked by at-bats from 1-11, to 11, pitcher and batter also thrown out. Unbelievable that Dave Goltz is going to get thrown out and he's pitching a gem. Another crazy, another crazy thing. So, okay, so pitcher and batter are thrown out. So Bando is out and Goltz is out, which means Bando, which means I got to find a, a replacement at third base for Bando. But be, so, and then we have another, and we have more players, I think, here. So one player from each team thrown out. So let's find out which players were thrown out. So on the athletics, that is a two. That is a two. And that would be being the players of that position in the game. So the catcher is thrown out as well. So Gene Tennis is out of the game. So Tennis is out of the game. And now for the Twins, they lose number 13, 11 to 13. Let's see here. 11 to 13, 10 to 20 being a bench player ranked by at-bats from 1 to 11. So 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's the fourth ranked, bat that's the fourth ranked batter on the bench. So Cusick, so 1. Two, three, and Tony Oliva gets tossed. So the Twins lose Dave Goltz and Tony Oliva. The Athletics lose Sal Bando and Gene Tennis. Okay. So we need a catcher and a third baseman for Oakland. Now, of course, Oakland is in the field. So let's see. So taking over a catcher will be Larry Haney. And he's going to bat sixth, taking over at third base, and taking over at the base because he did get hit by the pitch is Ken McMullen. So he'll take over at third. What a mess. But okay, we figured it out. Goltz and Oliva is out. Oliva was a bench player, so the, the Twins don't lose anybody in the field. But I need a new pitcher. So coming on to pitch for the Twins is going to be, what are we, in the seventh inning, top of the seventh? So is going to be, and who's supposed, who comes up at bat? The batter is Larry Haney, by the way. And coming to bat pitch for the Twins will be Bill Campbell. So he's going to take over. 
even though he really is the closer here, but he's got nine batters, so it makes sense. What a mess. Okay, so we have a fight on the field as everyone gets all over the place. Midlife crisis joins us here at Metropolitan Stadium. So it all said and done, Bando is out. So now McMullen is in. And I got to change the ratings here a little bit for him. So timeout. So 2-10. Tennis is out. And taking over for him is Larry Haney. And he is a little, he is 4-3. He is 4 Four, three, eleven. Ah, hold on. Time out. I'm gonna mark it on the car score sheet here. All right. I'll fix it when it dries. No, I've not lost control of the game. Well, I've not lost control of the game. Not a problem. Okay, so we have a hit by pitch. So I marked that match. So we have a runner on first. Now here's Larry Haney. Ken McMullen will take over at will take over at third base for Bando. No strat roll. Now we get back to baseball. Bill Campbell, 4-3. Strikeout 14. No. Haney will swing. 5-6. It's a fly out to center. And that's out number one. Double play, by the way, is already on. So one out. And now here's Claudel Washington. Washington is 0, for, is 0 for 1. I take a bathroom break and RJL loses control of the player. Don't you hate it when it does that? Campbell will pitch. 3-6. That's strikeout. 8 got him. He'll strike out Washington. And that is out number 2. And now Billy Williams. Williams 0 for 2. McMullen still on it first. The infield is now back. Campbell, 6-6, six, six, strikeout four. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Good. He struck him out. He gets the remaining two batters on K's, and the inning is over. So no runs, no hits, at least not no hits made by a bat on the ball. There were probably, I'm sure there were hits in the field, uh, probably by fists, unfortunately. A uh, hit batter, but that is all. So I'm sure they'll go ahead and uh, get themselves back to normal. And we are at the seventh inning stretch. Sing, take me out to the ball game. I will be right back. Don't forget, we have the 10-minute ticker brought coming up to you, brought to you by Fast Score tonight. Tomorrow, there will be no game. Uh, this, is a, this is the last day of the month of July, so I usually take a break between the two months. So no game tomorrow. We will return. I may do something else tomorrow night, but there'll be no baseball. So we'll be back on Wednesday with starting August 2nd as we now begin the playoff push. And on August 2nd, it will be the St. Louis Cardinals taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Pete Falcone will go for the Cardinals and Doc Medich for the Pirates. St. Louis holding on for dear life to try to stay with to try to stay within third place, stay within third place in the National League East. And the Pirates right now and the Mets are tied for are tied by in wins. So a very important game for the Cardinals on the second. 
So don't miss that game. The Cardinals and the Pirates, that will be Wednesday. There'll be no baseball tomorrow night, month break. Yep, Cardinals games usually mean a wild amount of runs. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Leading off for the Twins will be Lyman Bostock, and I've already been told that the league will be reviewing the tape uh, for the fight to see if there are anybody's, maybe any suspensions handed out. Of course, we don't do that since we play as played lineups, but who knows when we play Oakland, Minnesota again. So here's Bostock. Bostock is two for three, has a double and a single. Lindblad can pitch to three more batters before tiring, so let's see how long he can go. Lindblad will pitch to Bostock. And that's a 6-5. That, again, is a lefty. That's a blank. Bostock will swing 3-2, pops out to, sh to shortstop. And that is out number one. Next up is Mike Cubbage. Cubbage is one for two, singled and walked. Lindblad with the pitch. 1-6. Against the lefty, that's a blank. Cubbage. 4-1. That's a ground out to third. And that'll be out number two. Lindblad doing a good job. The A's bullpen has really shut the Twins down. But again, starting pitching has been a failure in a game. Here's Larry Heisel. Heisel is two for three. Two singles. Lindblad, 5-3 against the righty. That's a walk chance. That 16 is still going to be too is going to be too high. Heisel will swing for six, and he laces a base hit to left. Heisel has his third hit of the game. The batter now is Dan Ford, and that will bring. And now Lindblad is tired. And they may take him out. And, yeah, they're going to take him out because Ford actually hits lefties better. So that's going to be it for Paul Lindblad. The Athletics will go to the bullpen, and they're going to go with Dick Bossman. Four wins, two losses, a 4-1-0 ERA. Bossman is the fourth Oakland pitcher. Two outs here, bottom of the seventh. Five-nothing twins. Bossman ready to pitch. 2-2, two, two, blank. Ford will swing. 5-2, that's a fly out to center, and that will end the inning. So a nice job by Dick Bossman to get a quick out, but they but the Twins did get a hit. 5 nothing after 7, as the Twins now can't figure out the Oakland bullpen, but they definitely could figure out the Oakland starters. Kind of like the game a couple of days ago. Where um, you get actually the game yesterday where Dave Frazelbin pitched a gave up set gave up seven runs to the Reds and then Padre pitching to shut the Reds down the rest of the way. We go to the top of the eighth. There is a kernel of truth in that rim shot. Yeah, you better toss it then. Yeah, how long does unpop popcorn stay good? Six months to a year. Oh, God. Jeez. You guys are terrible. You guys are terrible. Bill Campbell will come out to pitch here at the top of the eighth inning. Phil Garner leads off for Oakland. He'll bat. He is one for two. Has a triple in the game. Campbell still has a couple of, a, 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 quite a bit of batters yet he could face. Campbell's pitch. 5-2. Double question mark. Garner a righty, a 1-4 to four would be a single. The 15 is too high. Garner will swing 2-2, two, two, and against a right-handed pitcher, he'll fly out to right. One down. And here is Bill North. North is 0 for 3. He won't be chomping on bad kernels. Yeah, you don't want to be charging on bad kernels. You may want to, you may not have a problem chomping on generals or majors, you know, or maybe even a captain or two, but you don't want to be chomping on bad kernels. How's that for a pun? Campbell will pitch. And you guys deserve that. 2-4. That is a strikeout. 18 too high. North will swing. 3-1. Ground out to second base. Out number two. Two men down, and now here is Bert Campanaris. Campanaris is 0 for 3. 
Campbell ready to deal. 6-2. That's at the park. Metropolitan Stadium 1-1. One, one. Base hit to left. Pass shortstop. That'll be a single. Campaneros will go to first. And that is only the second hit in this game for Oakland. RJL clearly loves witty commentary. Don't I? Campaneros singles Pat short. That's only the second hit by the A's in this game. And now here's Don Baylor. Baylor is 0 for 2. Walked in the first. Can the A's maybe get something going here with two outs? Campbell with the pitch. 3-6. Strikeout. 7. Nope. That's a strikeout. And that is the inning. As he gets Baylor on a K. No runs and a hit for Oakland. But they have been shut down totally on the on the field and and probably in the suspension in the penalty box, which I'm pretty sure some might be facing here. Bottom of the eighth coming up, still five nothing twins. Dick Bossman will stay out there to pitch. Bob Randall leads off for mini soda. Randall is one for three, has a double in the game. Bossman will pitch. 3-3, three, three. home run question mark, Randall a righty, a 1-13, to 13, the 9 passes. Now, Randall, the only way he can get a home run here is on a 2. A 1-2, to two, Randall has a homer. No, it's a 14, but he'll swing anyway. 6-4, that's a ground out to short. So, Randall made it interesting, but all he does is chop it to short for the out. Next batter for the Twins is Braun. Braun is, he is two for four, two singles and reached on an error. Bossman ready to deal. 4-2, blank. Braun, 2-6. That's a fly out to center. Two away. And now next batter is Roy Smalley. Smalley is 0 for 2. He's walked twice, though. Bossman ready to deal. Try to get a 1-2-3 inning. 1-4. That's blank. Smalley will swing to 1 against a righty. Nope, that's going to be a single past the shortstop for a base hit. Smalley keeps the inning alive with a single. He'll go to first. And that will give one more chance for Rod Carew. Carew is one for four, has a double in the game. Smalley on it first. Carew coming up to bat. Twins need wins to hold to try to hold up to the third, to the top three in the division. Bossman will pitch. Three, five, strikeout 12. No. Carew gets the swing. Five, four, and against a right hander, that's going to be a ground out to third. And the throw will go to second to get Smalley. And that will end the inning. No runs and a hit for the Twins. After eight, still five to nothing in favor of Minnie Soda. Will we see some ninth inning magic? It is time for the ninth. Top of the ninth inning. Joe Rudy will lead off for Oakland. Bill Campbell has two more batters to face before tiring, and he's going to stay out there. Now, there's some rule I'm not sure of. If you are a pitcher and you are in the lead and you're thrown out of the game, and he was thrown out, I believe, I believe he was thrown out in the sixth inning, does he still get credit for the win if he's ejected? I don't know that answer. Maybe somebody can answer that for me. He was the because right now Dave Goltz is the winning pitcher, but he's ejected. But and it went through and he reached the six. He was ejected in the sixth. So does the is uh does he still get the can he still get the win? Campbell with the pitch. One four. That's a blank. Rudy will swing. One two. And that's a ground out to second. Out number one. And the batter now will be Ken McMullen, who takes over at third base for the ejected for the ejected Sal Bando. McMullen, 220 average, five homers, 23 RBIs. If 
Five innings pitch is the only prerequisite. Thank you there, Dave. Campbell will pitch. 5-3. That's a blank. McMullen. 1-5. That's a ground ball to third. Picked up there by Cubbage. Throws to first. Out number two. Last chance. Larry Haney, the catcher who came in for the thrown out for the for the um for the thrown out Gene Tennis who was ejected. So Campbell will pitch to Haney. Two outs, top of the ninth inning. Twins doing the job. Campbell, 4-6. That's a strikeout. 19. No. Haney will swing. 5-1. That's a ball hit to left field. That is a 16. And against the righty, that's going to be too high. Fly ball left field. Coming under it is Larry Heisel. He takes three steps to his right. Puts down his glove. Block. And the ball falls into it. That's your game. The Minnesota Twins completely hang, handcuff Oakland in this game. Five to nothing. They only give up a combined two hitter. Big win for Minnesota, and they needed it to stay alive in the top three in the American League West. Final line score in the 10-minute ticker coming up. Charlie Finley's taking notes for fire sale. Yeah. For the Minnesota Twins, five runs on ten hits and no errors. For the Oakland Athletics, no runs on two hits and one error. Dave Goltz is going to get the win as he pitched a beautiful game. Paul Mitchell will get the loss. And Bill Campbell is going to get a save because he pitched pretty much two and a half innings. So Bill Campbell will get the save, even though it was a 5 nothing win. So he gets the save in that case, I believe. So a great win for Minnesota, 5-0. Oakland only two hits. Talk about being handcuffed for that game. It is now time for the 10-minute ticker brought to you by Fast Score Baseball of Replay Sports. Let's see how the rest of the baseball world does today. So a 5 nothing win for the Twins over Oakland. Let's see how it goes. It's July 31st, Detroit at Baltimore. Detroit has a 4. 64. That's pretty good. That's 6 runs. Baltimore with a 14. 13. That's not going to do it. Detroit will beat Baltimore. Yankees and the Red Sox in a doubleheader. Yankees with game 1. Yankees with a 12. 41. And that is 4 runs. Boston with a 13, 56, and that's going to be a win for the Red Sox. They win game one. Game two, Yankees with a 13, 51. They get these great rolls. That's a six. Boston with an 11, 33, and that is three runs, and the Yankees and the Red Sox will split a twin bill. White Sox at the Angels. White Sox with a seven, 11, and that is a straight Zero. California with a 10. 56. And that is going to be six runs. The Angels will beat the White Sox. Texas at Kansas City. Texas with a 7. 45. They got a 4. Eight Rangers are not out of it yet. Kansas City with a 7. 33. And that is three runs and a win for the Rangers. Cleveland at Milwaukee. Doubleheader. Game 1. Cleveland with a 7. 
42, and that is three runs. Milwaukee with a five, 33. That is two runs. Cleveland will win game one. Game two, Cleveland with a nine, 64, and that is seven. Milwaukee with an eight, 34, and that is three runs. And Cleveland will take both games from the Brewers. I can already let you know the Milwaukee Brewers have been removed from the schedule. St. Louis taking on the Cubs. The Cardinals have a 12. 11. Ugh, that's a zero. Cubs have a 10. 52, and that's going to be five. The Cubs will beat the Cardinals. Cardinals are fading. I've not taken them off the schedule yet. San Diego taking on the, the Reds. Padres have a five. 32, and that is two runs. The Reds have a 17. 55, and that is seven runs. And that one belongs to the Reds. Atlanta taking on the Astros in a twin bill. Game one, Atlanta with a six. That's a 12, and that is a zero. Houston with a 10. Lots of shutouts tonight. 52, that's going to be a win for the Astros. They'll win game one. Game two, Atlanta has a seven. 36, and that is three runs. The Astros have a nine. 62, and that is six runs. The Astros take both games from Atlanta, and I know... And I know Steeler fan will say Astros, Astros. Philadelphia and the Mets. Philadelphia with a 10. A 12. Oh, yes. And that's going to be only one run. Mets have John Matlack on the mound and an 8. I need a I need a one run. I need a 13 or higher to tie. A 21 or higher to win. 46. There we go. There we go. That's going to be his four runs, and the Mets will have a happy recap against the Phillies. Montreal taking on Pittsburgh. Montreal with a seven. <clears throat> Fifteen, and that is one run. Pittsburgh has a 13. Fifty-six. That's going to be a win for them. Easily, and that is seven runs. The Pirates will beat the Spose. Dodgers and the Giants. Dodgers have a six. 54, and that is five runs. The Giants have a three. 24, and that is one run. The Dodgers will beat the Giants. Moving on now to August 1st. Detroit taking on Baltimore. Detroit with a five. They have a 45, and that is three. Baltimore has a 15, 44, and that's going to be five runs. The Orioles will beat the Tigers. Yankees at Boston. Yankees have a 14, 25, and that is three runs. Boston has a 9, 35, and that is also three runs. We've got extras. We've got extras. Yankees a minus one clutch. So six minus one is five. Boston with a minus two clutch. Nope, that's going to be a win for the Yankees, and I'll give them four runs. That's going to be a win for the Yankees. So four runs goes to New York, and they will win that game seven to three. White Sox taking on California. White Sox with a two. 44, and that is three runs. The Angels have a seven. 62, and that's going to be a win for them. They get six runs, a win for the Halos. Texas at Kansas City. Texas with a six. 21, and that's one run. Royals have a nine. 13. Ooh, and that's one run. Wow. We got extras there. Texas has a zero clutch, and they roll a one. Kansas City has a zero clutch. They can't lose. That's a five. So that's an automatic win for the Royals because the tie automatically goes to the home team. I'll give them two runs, and they will win this game 3-1. to one. Cleveland taking on Milwaukee. Cleveland with an 8. 25, and that is two runs. Milwaukee has a 10. 
42, and that is four runs. The Brewers will beat the Tribe. Oakland and Minnesota, doubleheader, game one. Oakland with a 12. 46, and that is five. Minnesota with a seven. 34, and that is three. Oakland wins game one. Game two, Oakland with a 16. 56, and that is seven. Minnesota with an 18, 34, and that is five. Oakland will take both games from Minnesota in the twin bill. Cardinals at the Cubs. Cardinals with a nine, 14, ouch, and that's only going to be one run. The Cubs trying to stay alive, although I have taken them off the schedule, but the Cubs have a six. 34, and that is going to be three runs. The Cubs will win. I did take them off the schedule in the next uh, on the next schedule block, but we can always bring them back on. Padres taking on the Reds. Padres have a 10 with Randy Jones in the mound. 44, and that is four runs. The Reds have a 12. 21, and that's going to be two runs, and the Reds will fall to the Padres here. Atlanta taking on Houston. The Braves have a nine. They're off the schedule, of course. 26, and that's three runs. The Astros are a nine. 55, they'll win that one, and that is five runs. So Houston will win both these games for a Steeler fan. The Philadelphia Phillies and the Mets are in a big doubleheader. Big doubleheader between Phillies and the Mets. Game one, Philadelphia with an 11. 23, and that is only two runs. The Mets have Bob Apodaca on the mound. They got a six. Uh, 23, I need a 24 or higher. 51, there we go. That is four, and the Mets will take game one. Game two, Philadelphia has a 14. 55. Oh, that's a good roll. That's going to be seven runs. The Mets have Nino Espinosa on the mound. They got a three. And the only... I got what? They got seven runs. The only way the Mets can tie is with a, is with a 66. Not happening. And that's going to be a zero. So the Mets and the Phillies will split a doubleheader. No problem. Get a happy recap for one of those games. Montreal taking on Pittsburgh. Montreal with a five. 32, and that is two runs. Pittsburgh with an 11, 35, and that is four runs. The Pirates will beat the Expos. Expos are just plain bad. Dodgers and the Giants in a big doubleheader. Dodgers game one, have an eight, 55, and that is five. The Giants have a five, 44, and that is three. Dodgers will win game one. Game two, Dodgers and the Giants. Game, Dodgers with a 14, 56, and that is seven. And the Giants have a five, 52, and that's only going to be four as the Dodgers will take both wins from the Giants. That is all for your 10-minute ticker tonight. If your team won tonight, congratulations. If they didn't, there's always Wednesday. And on Wednesday, it'll be the St. Louis Cardinals Taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Cardinals will have Pete Falcone on the mound against Pittsburgh's Doc Medich. No game tomorrow for the month break between July and August. So join me then. But tomorrow I may do something. We'll see what we'll we'll see what happens. BB BB Bears Den Tribe Fan Baseball Demos Keith White. Uh see Dave Uncle Dave Gardner Midlife Crisis MP Fox Brian Patterson. Uh, let's see here. Let's make their base. Let's see. We get everybody here. Tribe fan Bea and Bob's tabletop sports and ID Jester. Thank you all for joining me tonight. Please leave a like on your way out through the turnstiles. Subscribe if you've not done so, and make sure you ring the bell. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay smart. Stay strong. We'll see you guys next time. Minnesota Twins shut out the swinging A's. The A's only got two hits and a five to nothing loss. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.